All right, we're back on the DDLC grind. I hope I fixed my microphone a bit. Uh, make sure that OBS is working. All right, there we go. We're chilling. At this point in time, I have not logged in to do the new side stories, but let's take, we got new pictures. Oh, that's a good one. I like that a lot. That's also a good one. I really also like that one a lot. And then, oh, we can see pictures of poems. That's amazing. And then the CGs, the secrets, the secrets. Whoa. Are these sketches for Sayori? That's, that's amazing. Okay. Is there anything in mail? No new mail. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Side stories. Understanding. Let's go. I think this is ex right after the events of the first one, if I remember right. I saw like the first 30 seconds of it and, you know, All right. Uh, the door suddenly opens halfway, then stops. A face peeks inside. A face that seems familiar. Uh, Sayori's eyes widen, recognizing the girl. She's very cons she very conspicuously mouths to Monica. It's her! It's the girl! It's true. The girl standing in the doorway is none other than the girl Sayori had come across reading in the uh, reading alone in the classroom. Thanks to Monica leaving a flyer on her desk, it seems she found her way to the club. Are you here for the literature club by any chance? Uh, am I in the wrong place? No, you're not! This is a literature club! Please, come inside! The girl fully steps in the door, but continues standing up against the wall, avoiding eye contact. Sayori continues to fail, containing her excitement. It's happening! Oh my gosh! Thank you so much for coming! Sorry, it's a little empty. Um, I'm Monica, and this is Sayori. We run their literature club, even though it's just us so far, but... What's your name, by the way? I'd like to join your club! Already? Wait, really? Are you sure? I mean, I should be good enough. Uh, everyone is welcome here. You don't have to be good enough. Oh, uh, do you want to have a seat? We'd love to get to know you. The girl nods, sliding over a nearby desk and gently sitting down. So what's your name? Yuri. I'm Sayori and this is Monica. Sayori, I already... Nice to meet you. Um, do you like fantasy? Like books? Yuri looks at Monica. Fantasy is cool. Have you heard of Annabelle Dupont? Uh, the game theory thing. I can't say that I have. Oh, well, she's my favorite author. In her fifth book, and it's just Yuri uh, grins and presses her knuckles against her cheeks in joy. You can borrow my books. I wouldn't mind. You're in for a really incredible experience. Um, Monica stammers, completely, uh, com caught completely off guard by Yuri taking control of the conversation. She glances at sideways at Sayori, asking for help. I'd love to. It sounds like you're really into them. They must be great. I'm so happy I found this club. Oh, I'm so stupid. I left all my books in my locker. I should have brought them. Yuri quickly stands up. I'll be right back. I'll go get them for you. I probably only need to uh, need to bring one for now. Sayori nervously says that, noting to herself the considerable heftiness of the book that Yuri sits down on her desk. True, okay. I'll go get the first one then. Yuri exits a club room in a flash, leaving Monica and Sayori silently exchanging glances. Oh my god, I wasn't prepared for this. How do I handle someone so intense? I have like no experience with fantasy except for the stuff I read when I was a kid, but that's probably like a joke compared to what she's into. I'm sure it'll be fine. In fact, I think it's neat we have different people who are into different kinds of literature. It'll be fun to learn from one another. Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree, but what if this is her only interest? Doesn't it kind of seem like that? Monica, don't you think you should be, uh, be more optimistic? We have a new club member. There shouldn't be room for anything but being happy. I'm excited to get to know her more, aren't you? Yeah, I guess you're right. Sorry for being so hasty, I just got really anxious all of a sudden. It's because you're afraid of not being able to take the lead. Ah, uh, what the heck. It's kind of scary how you can point things out like that, Sayori. I just like learning what makes people happy or sad. Yeah. Hey, you know what? You'd probably uh, be great at helping you or feel comfortable here. Then you could take a break from helping me with the administrative stuff and just focus on spending, focus spending, focus on spending some time with her. Eh. Yay, that's exactly what I want to do. Besides, Sayori lowers her voice. I'm probably going to need all the time I can get. She taps her finger against the dauntingly chunky book Yuri left sitting on the desk. Right afterwards, the door opens to reveal Yuri's return. I'm back! Her breath is slightly heavy, combined with, the, with her short time gone indicates she may have ran at least part of the way. She makes her way back to Sayori and sets the book down on her desk. Just as Sayori feared, the, bo the book Yuri brought for her is just about equal to the size of the one already on Yuri's desk. 
Well, there are probably a few things you should know before getting started on it. There are some things that are more explained in other books that take place in the same universe, so going over those would be good to, uh, would be good to keep you from getting confused at the start. Uh, um, Sire nervously interjects. Well, I was thinking that maybe today we could get to know each other a little bit more. You know, I think if we're going to be reading together, then I would like that from across the room. Monica smiles and nods that Sayori while Yuri isn't looking. Oh, okay. Yuri sits down, then looks at the book, and then glances around the room, showing indication that she has has anything more to add so it may so what made you decide to want to join the club well i like reading so i was immediately interested i had no idea that someone was starting a literature club but that's my fault since i've been pay paying any attention to any of the club recruitment advertisements i only found out because she yuri glanced over at monica 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 came into my classroom and put a flyer on my desk suddenly yuri's face darkens and she shakes her head at herself I was so stupid, so stupid, I got too nervous and couldn't even look up, and she, so, so she just walked out. It took me several days just to come here cause I, because I was afraid Monica told everyone how inconsiderate I was, but I decided that was probably irrational. Wait, no, that was totally my fault. I felt so bad about interrupting you like that, I just walked out. I was actually really hoping that you'd come by. Yuri exhales in relief. Woo! I always seem to interpret things as the worst possible scenario. Well, I was really nervous uh, to come here for some other reasons too. Such as there being too many people. Not that I mind that that much, but I have a really hard time having to meet a large number of new people at once. It's actually amazing that it's just the two of you. I definitely came at the right time. Ah, uh, that makes me happy. I'm proud of you to work. I'm proud of you for working up the courage to come. Yuri smiles warmly to herself. I've never really had the privilege of sharing my interests with others before. It's so hard to find others who are into the same things I am, except online. So I thought the literature club would provide a chance for me to do that. Ah, uh, she's one of those anime watchers, online, Discord, gamers. She's an e-girl, but not the cool, not the funny e-girl. She's this sad e-girl whose like, username is Queen of Blackness or whatever. What kind of other things are you into? Like genres? I don't know, just anything. Even if it's not literature. Ooh, uh... Just things that you would think are dumb. Sorry, pauses. Uh, sorry, pauses. A look of concern on her face. How about I tell you something I'm into, then you can tell me something about, uh, and then you can tell me about something you're into. I suppose that would be okay. Okay. Well, I'm pretty into like crafty things, like making cute little collages or, or decorating things, like cards or jewelry boxes. My rooms are always cluttered with random stuff because I, I keep buying things to make gifts for my friends, but then I put it off until the last minute. <laughs> So yeah, that's something I'm uh, something's kind of silly that I'm into. You sound quite creative. Not that much. It's just that you'd be surprised by how much you can do with scissors and glue and stuff. So I have to share something that I'm into now, right? Sayori nods. Um, well, I guess I'm into nature. I love nature! Monica, I'm gonna start a nature club. No, you're not. You're stuck here with me now. How dare you, Sayori, trying to get out of it like that. I am not. Oh yeah? Well, I hereby appoint you as vice president of the literature club. There, now you're stuck with me. Hey, don't give me responsibilities. Oh, I'm sorry, Yuri. I interrupted you. Go ahead. It's fine. Yuri pauses, feeling awkward after getting cut it off. I like going out of the woods or to the park. Just a place where you can walk and sit around and not have any people around. It's peaceful. Just nice to kind of remove myself from everything that matters and let my racing mind operate autonomously for a while. When do you like to do that? Just depends on my mood. After school, on the weekends, whenever I feel like I need it. Wow, I feel like I would never have the time to do something like that. I find that we have a lot more time than we think we do, if you don't let it slip through your fingers. The three continue their conversation, led, primar led primarily by Sayori, both Monica chiming in every now and then as well. Monica had intended to leave Sayori and focus on her own work, but she found it difficult not to join in. Before they knew it, the end of the day was upon them once more. It looks like we should be wrapping up for today. Booba. So you two going to be starting on that book next club meeting? That's the plan. I'm so excited. Sayori beams. Yuri collects her things. Once packed, Yuri wordlessly waves to Sayori and Monica with a gentle smile. Bye! As Yuri exits, Sayori enthusiastically returns her farewell. Once again, Sayori and Monica are left in the club room. Sayori, you're a lifesaver. <laughs> I didn't do anything. I just talked. Still. Besides, it really lifted my mood. Feels really nice when I can put my energy towards other people like that. She was really excited to be included, you know? It made me happy. Well, there's no doubt in my mind that she'll have a great time here, with you engaging her. How are you feeling about starting with uh, the book with her next meeting? I'm kind of scared, but I think she'll be happy as long as I'm trying my best. 
I think you'll do great. After the surprise of a new club member, it seems like everyone has their spirits lifted and with something new to look forward to. Epic. What's coming up? Are we on the we on the next day? Oh hell yeah. Another school day ends. Swallowing her anxiety, Yuri makes her way to the club room expecting to be the last one to arrive. As she opens the door, she's surprised to find only Sayori in the club room. It's club time again! Monica went to the computer lab, so it's just us today. Is that okay? Yuri silently nods, and unable to make eye contact. Um, I'm sorry about yesterday, huh? Sayori tilts her mind, uh, unsure of exactly what Yuri's talking about. Well, I mean, by the way, I got overly excited to share my books, and how you had to stop me so we could talk first. So considerate of me. I got too excited and forgot about every everyone else in the club, so... Aha! Yuri, you didn't do anything wrong. I thought it was cute how excited you were. Uh, well, still. I think I changed my mind about the book. We don't have to read it. Huh? Why? Because I know you that you were just humoring me anyway. In retrospect, it's rather obvious that nobody was truly interested. But if you like it so much, then it must be worth sharing. I've already decided I'll join the club, so you don't have to try so hard to entice me. That's not what I was doing. A moment of uncomfortable silence stretches between the two of them. Um, well, the thing is, we don't even have any club activities yet. And Yamaka and I have just been working on recruitment stuff mostly. So it just sounded like something fun we could do together, reading your books. You know, like, as a club activity. That'd be okay, right? Mmm. Why am I being so resistant to this anyway? It's exactly what I wanted in the first place, and you're being so nice about it. I really don't know what's wrong with me. Sorry for being like this. You don't have to apologize. Just tell me if there's anything I can do to help you feel more comfortable here. Mmm. Sayori pulls her desk up against Yuri's and sits next to her. The book in question is already on Yuri's desk. Peering over, Sayori reads the cover of the book. Dusk Bell. Part 1 of the Everlast Saga. Aha, it's Dusk Bell by Annabelle! Sorry, I'm ready now. Oh, right, I should probably get some paper. Yuri grabs a spiral notebook of hers and tears out a few sheets of paper. Wait, how come you need paper? Osha is useful to draw things out sometimes, like maps, timelines, family trees, or just for taking notes. Notes? Uh, I mean, hmm, yes, that's an effective strategy. Hmm, yes, quite, indeed. Hmm, yes, shallow and pedantic. Exactly, I'm sure it'll be especially helpful for someone new to the genre. Uh, Sari's joke flew completely over Yuri's head. But thinking about it, she decides it's probably the best that it did. Well, I'm not used to having company through this, but I'll try to make it as accessible as possible. I trust you. You're, like, super smart. Oh, please. I'm gonna do this real quick. Um, Yuri tries to dismiss the compliment, but she can't hide her smile in a light blush. You can't generalize intelligent. I'm only smart in the things I have a lot of experience with. Contrarily, I'm awful at anything that involves real people. That should be evident enough from the two days I've spent here so far. So in my eyes, it's everyone else who comes off as smart. Alright, whatever. Especially you. No! Sorry, rubs her shoulder against Yuri's. You're such a sweetheart when you're not being shy. Anyway, would you like to get started? <laughs> okay. After the minor diversion between them, the two get back on track with their planned club activity. Yuri begins to guide Sayori through the basics of the fantasy world her story takes place in. The more of it she details, the race, fictions, history, elements of magic, the more questions Sayori seems to have. But despite uh, Sayori's expectation, Yuri eloquently guides her through it in a way that's such... In a way such that it's fun to follow along. It becomes evident that the world-building aspect of the story, not just the story itself, is one that Fury finds her pa Yuri finds her passion leaning towards. How do people come up with this stuff? It's like the exact opposite of the kind of writing that I do. What kind of writing? Well, like poetry and stuff like that. The things I write are like just putting down feelings that come into my head, you know? But this is like, there's so much planning and hard work. Ah, you're into poetry? I think there's an appendix that includes some of the kingdom's uh, written works, like the poetry and folk songs. No way! Haha! <laughs> Yuri giggles, filling Sayori's heart with happiness when she first, uh, when she realizes it's the first time she's heard Yuri laugh. It means Yuri must be having fun. Anyway, I think we can get started reading now, if you're ready. Okay, but I can't read very fast. Oh, that's fine. I'm very patient. Patient is something I pride myself in. Hmm, I see. Sayori jots Yuri's patient into her notes. Hey, that's for the book! Haha, <laughs> I'm just kidding. 
But I'm kind of glad you're patient, because I need that sometimes. A lot of times. So I already flips through the first page of the book, getting past the table of contents. Okay, chapter one. The room begin becomes silent as the two of them begin to read. But the silence only lasts for a moment before Sayori speaks up again. What does vindicated mean? Ah, uh, well, in this context, it essentially means that he was proven innocent. It's okay to ask questions, right? Of course! Sayori turns the page. Are these footnotes? Mm, a lot of the dialogue has cultural references that require explanation to be understood. Jesus Christ. Yuri is really into some shitty books. Mmm, the two continue reading. Yuri's relaxed expression remains unchanged. While Sayori's expression grows tense as she tries to make her way through the dense text. Up until now, their expressions had been reversed, with Sayori easily navigating social situations and Yuri struggling in them. But the tables have turned. Mm, the turns have tabled, indeed. Wait, are they really talking about the past right now, or present? Where? Right here. They're talking about the past. These paragraphs are describing a flashback that Barnus is having. But they didn't tell me that. It's implied from the context. Sayori rubs her temples. The two of them continue with Sayori asking fewer questions. She begins to understand the value in the notes as she finds herself referring to them somewhat often, even adding to them. But her reduction in questions is not from, uh, comes not from her getting used to the reading, but rather her, from her fearing she'll come across as stupid. At last, Sayori, Sayori reaches the end of the chapter. I think we can stop here for now. Okay. Sayori takes a deep breath and closes what's, uh, what little of the book she's gotten through so far. So what are your thoughts up to this point? Um, Sayori tries to find words. Am I doing well so far? Hmm? I'm not sure I understand. Well, I don't know. When it takes me so long to read and understand things, it makes me feel really dumb. But I really like how into it you get. It makes me want to keep going and keep doing my best so I can see, see it the way you do. Uh, the relaxation in Yuri's expression fades. I see. Yuri quietly gathers her things. We can continue tomorrow, right? Yuri pauses and shakes her head. We can do something else tomorrow. But, I'm sorry. Wait, sorry for what? I don't understand. I'm sorry. I don't want to do this anymore, that's all. I'm sorry that I made you. Yuri leaves. You weren't making me? Sorry, he's left alone with her words. How did this happen? We were having fun just a second ago. It's my fault. I said something stupid and hurt her. I should have just told her that I enjoyed it. Monica trusted me with this. It's the thing I'm good at, and I still messed it up. What if she doesn't want to come back? Drowned in guilt, Sayori stares blankly at her desk, spread with notes. The book sits next to them. Right. If she isn't coming back, then she wouldn't have left the book here, right? Unless she just forgot to take it with her. Ugh, this is horrible! Was it really because she thought I wasn't enjoying our time together? Or maybe she wasn't enjoying our time together because I'm not good enough. Probably let her down so much by having trouble following along. Yeah, I'm sure if I was smarter, I would have been having so much more fun. I need to do better for her. Oh, that's it. We're done. Pictures. It's the Yuri one? Oh, hell yeah. Ah, oh, the new character art is fantastic. I love it so much. The original art. Let's take a look at the original art. The Sayori original, the Natsuki original, and the... Oh, the Monica. Magnifique! This is also fantastic. This is amazing. Ugh. Flawless. Absolutely breathtaking. Alright, well, here we go. We're going to open side stories and do understanding part two. Let's go! Begin side story. Yes, sir! For the first time, Sayori is the first to enter the club room. Anxiety courses through her, relentless, through her relentlessly. Will Yuri show up today? Sitting at a desk, she stamps her feet in, a, in an attempt to calm down. Why am I letting this affect me so much? I'm doing everything I can to make Yuri happy. But my best wasn't good enough. But it was still my best! But I'm letting everyone down. I'm always just a disappointment. So he continues to wrestle with her self-deprecating thoughts. Every tiny noise causes her to lift her head in anticipation of Yuri's arrival. Minutes pass. Nobody enters the club room. Not Yuri, nor Monica. Gosh, I'm so late. Why did I, ever, why did I offer to help those other students with their work? I'm such a pushover sometimes. It's going to leave such a bad impression on the on new club members like Yuri if I'm not the first one here. Monica rounds the corner approaching the club room. As she does so, Yuri? Ah! 
Yuri jumps at the sound of Monica's voice. She's sitting outside the club room against the wall next to the door. Embarrassed, she quickly closes the book she was reading and stands up. Oh gosh, I'm so sorry I'm late. You didn't have to wait outside for me. The door to the club room is open. It's not. Yuri stammers, unable to explain herself. She peers inside the club room through the window, then looks away. Actually, I was just wondering if I could help you help you today instead. Huh? Me? With club publicity and stuff? Yes! Monica is utterly confused. Why is Yuri asking this all of a sudden when she was so eager to spend time with Sayori before? Did they not get along after all? Monica looks into the club room and si sees Sayori sitting alone inside. Okay. It's kind of si it's kind of a simple job, but I'd be happy for you to tag along. Me too. Monica is worried, but she finds it difficult to insert herself into whatever conflict that may have arisen. It's a little ironic. She realizes that she could have been th that she could be so confident, uh, uh, conflict avoidant after having been in the debate club. Okay, let's take a walk together. I just have to make copies of this new flyer, then go around to the billboards and replace the old ones with the new ones. Yuri nods, and the two set off. The two walk in silence. Without Sayori, Monica finds it quite difficult to strike a conversation. So, how's everything been going? Fine. That's good. None of them follow up with anything more. Monica tenses up at the stinted conversation. How the heck does Sayori do it? Ah, uh, sorry I didn't see you yesterday. I went straight to the computer lab to work on the flyers. Yeah, Sayori told me. What did you two end up doing yesterday? Just some reading? Well, I'm glad it's really starting to feel like more like a literature club now. Yeah. Kind of funny, I felt so intimidated at first when I heard about the kind of reading you were into. But you know, it's kind of stupid to me just because I'm intimidated by things I'm not good at. It's silly to assume that everyone who comes to the club will just have the same interests as me. But it's cool you were able to get Sayori into it. It's like the club is working. I'm really happy about that. She's not into it. Huh? She's not into it, and, I've, and I'm stupid for forcing it onto her. Yuri falls silent again as if, as if she started her thought but can't figure out how to continue it. Did something happen? Yuri sighs. No, it's just me. I just... Here he pauses. Hmm. I'm thinking. A moment passes in silence, then Yuri shakes her head. I shouldn't be complaining to you all of a sudden. Don't be silly. I don't- I don't- I won't think you're complaining. I just want to make sure you feel welcome. If it's important to that, then you can tell me anything. Well, I do feel welcome. Too welcome, I guess. It's not an issue with the club, it's just an issue with me. So I feel wrong to inconvenience you with it. Ah. Monica pauses and thinks. Well, fuck off then, anyways. <laughs> I'm kidding, Yuri, you're welcome anytime. Well, what if we put it this way? It's my job as president to understand the needs of the club members, right? We're going to have all kinds of people joining this club, hopefully anyway. And learning about diverse needs and interests in, of everyone will help me come up with the club activities that everyone can be happy with. That everyone can be happy with? Not just only some people? Of course! I need to be looking out for everyone, otherwise what kind of club would it be? I see. Yuri looks a little more relaxed. It seems to Monica that switching from a, symp a sympathetic approach to a pragmatic one was a good choice. Each individual truly does have their own needs. Okay. Here he takes a deep breath. I'm a really weird and awkward person. I've accepted that about myself. I just don't know how to, I guess, connect with other people. How is it so easy for everyone else? How do you just make conversation about any arbitrary topic? I can talk about for hours the things I'm into, unfortunately so much that I don't know when to stop. But for anything else, I just have no idea what to say. So I understand that about myself. I'm just not good with people. I can't help it. So it feels like whenever I'm confronted with a new social situation, I'm either ignored or made fun of or taken pity on. And Sayori falls into that third category. She what? Hold on, you're saying Sayori is taking pity on you? Yuri nods. <laughs> no, she's not. I just want to be treated like a normal person. If you don't like me or connect with my interests, then just tell me. I can accept that and move on. Sayori is too nice to me. Trust me, it's not just you. It is literally everybody. I'm so stupid for not realizing that she would just go along with whatever I pushed onto her. Nobody deserves to put themselves through that kind of discomfort just because I, they take pity on some weirdo who doesn't know how to make friends. It's the worst feeling. I hate it. Your sharp words cut through the temp's air. Somewhere in the middle of the conversation, the two stop short in the hallway, prioritizing the conversation over their original task. Monica looks at Yuri. Yuri only looks down with her fists clenched. I think you should tell her that. I can never say that to somebody's face. It's pathetic. Sayori is different. Making people happen is happy is the most important thing to her. I'm sure that's all she's trying to do. So if you're able to explain to her what makes you happy, then she'll do anything to make it happen. That's the problem. What kind of friendship has one person trying to cater to the other person's weird needs? 
I'm sorry, I'm making myself sound so... No, I think I'm starting to understand. Monica hesitates to finish her thought out loud. It's something that Sayori would be able to say better. Sayori is someone who will give anyone however much kindness they need in order to smile. But Yuri, who has difficult accepting kindness, must be driving Sayori to be even more assertive with her kindness, further exacerbating the matter. Neither person is to blame, but it's an issue that can't be resolved without them understanding each other better. Sayori wants to be your friend, I promise that. It's okay for different people to have different needs. I mean Sayori, she has her own needs too. But good friends work together and can be what what they need for each other. You just have to be good, you just have to be... You just have to... Oh my god, I'm really suffering. <clears throat> Ugh. You just have to have good communication and talk about it. I don't have good communication. Yuri stops and shakes her head. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. My head is just... It's so resistant to everything. I'm... I'm pushing such a kind person away from me because of it. Yuri pauses to think. I'm so tired of this cycle I'm creating for myself. I think I'm so afraid of people pushing me away that I just push them away first. How thoughtless and immature of me. Yuri takes a deep breath and exhales. I didn't mean for this to turn into a whole venting session. But I understand now that I just need to communicate with her. Haha, <laughs> you're totally fine. It's for the club, remember? You're just m help making the club a better place for everyone. Yeah. Yuri falls silence again. She looks like she wants to say something. This... This kind of critical thinking is something I'm really bad at. You know, about people. So thank you. Anytime! Monica smiles at Yuri. For a moment, Yuri finds it, finds it in herself to meet Monica's gaze, returning a shy smile of her own. Yuri and Monica finished replacing the old flyers with the new ones. More accurately, Monica did most of the work while Yuri followed along. But as the club room once again draws to a near, so does Yuri's confrontation. I can't do this. Yes, you can. It'll be great. Yuri sighs and shakes her head. I'm never going to feel confident enough. I just have to do it. If I don't do it now, I never will. Yuri stares toward the door, but then face turns to Monica. You're not just going to wait outside, are you? Aha, I can take a walk. Want me to get you a coffee or something? Actually, I prefer tea. I like to make my own, though, so please don't worry about it. Although I suppose that one downside of reading here in the club room... In the club that rather... <laughs> Although I suppose that one downside of reading here in the club rather than at home... I don't get to drink tea while I'm reading. Sorry, I guess that has nothing to do with this. You know what? Now that you mention it, I bet we could get permission to keep stuff for the, the tea in the for tea in the club room. You can use like an electric kettle to heat up water, right? Would that really be possible? I'll look into it. I think it'd be great. Yuri smiles and nods at the thought. I'll be back in a bit. Good luck. Monica waves at Yuri, then turns around and departs down the hallway as Yuri's smile fades once more. A moment of daydreaming about tea is enough to save her from the anxiety of the task that lies before her. But. It must be done. Taking one more deep breath, Yuri timidly opens the clubroom door. Yuri? Wait, hold on, I'm not done yet! Sayuri shuffles a bunch of papers around. Uh, um, Yuri stammers, her words suddenly caught in her throat. At that moment, she realizes how Sayuri has been spending her afternoon. I wasn't expecting you to come today. I was really hoping to make it feel... Make it all the way through the next chapter first. But I got most of the way through it. And look! Sayori holds up a sheet of paper. It's a page of the notes, beautifully produced with indentations, categories, and even color coding. As Yuri, uh, as Yuri sees it, her expression shifts from anxiety to despair. I was afraid you were going to get disappointed in me, so I've been trying really hard. Stop. Yuri presses her fist against her forehead. Please stop. I can't take this. Yuri? Sayori's voice quivers in shock after receiving the exact opposite response she was expecting. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sayori looks away in guilt. Did I do something wrong? I don't understand, so if I did something wrong, please tell me Yuri shakes her head. No, it's me. I keep putting myself in these situations where people are afraid to treat me normally. If you don't like this kind of reading, it's okay, just please just tell me. I don't need to be treated differently just because I'm weird. But I don't treat you differently. I just want my friends to be happy. So I thought if we did something together that you'll really like. I don't want your pity! Why did I do that? Yuri sinks to her knees, her voice squeaks. I'm sorry. 
Tears of guilt and self-loathing begin to stream down her face. This isn't how it was supposed to go. Why is it just so hard to articulate your thoughts? Why do you end up pushing everyone away from you? Yuri's mind pounds with internal accusations as she shuts her eyes, unable to face Sayori or the rest of the world. She should leave. Just escape from here before Monica sees her like this and before Sayori tells Monica what she did. Before Yuri can put any stre uh, strength into her legs, she feels a warm pair of arms gently wrap around her from behind. Oh my god! It's so good! It's so good! Mwah! Mwah! Whoever did this art, if I remember who it is, I'm not gonna say because I don't want to get it wrong. Fantastic art. Absolutely beautiful art. Oh my god. It's okay. Sayori whispers in a soothing voice. It's okay. It's okay. Overcome by despair, Yuri finds herself unable to protest or pull away from Sayori's kind jester. Yuri sniffles, breathing heavily through the uh, through a clenched throat, trying all her willpower to con trying with all her willpower to control herself. I understand. I understand that the feelings in your head are different from the things you're trying to say. I know that must be what you're feeling right now. I promise I understand that. So I'll give you as much time as you need. When you're ready, just tell me your feelings and we'll talk about them together, okay? Yuri sniffles and nods her head. She gives herself a minute to compose her thoughts, then speaks while steadying her voice. I think... I think that I've gotten so used to people being weirded out by me that it feels like anyone who's nice to me is just doing it out of pity. I'm so horrible with people, so it makes me not want to believe that someone can actually like me for who I am. Yuri pauses, but Sayori doesn't interrupt. Rather, she waits for Yuri to continue. I got so excited when I joined the literature club. I thought that it's finally my chance to make friends through my interests, because my interests are the only things that I know how to talk about. That's all I have going for me. But then, whenever I catch myself getting overly obsessed in front of other people, it feels like I'm making a fool of myself. I hate myself for it. Ultimately, I just want to be treated like a normal person, but how am I supposed to expect that when I can't behave like one? I just want to learn how to get along with people and stop ruining things for myself. That's all. Rhi finishes her thoughts, feeling more said you have after having gotten them out. Sayori, who can feel Yuri's breath arise and fall uh, beneath her arms, realizes that as well. Thank you for helping me understand you got a little bit better. Thank you for helping me understand you a little bit better. You know you were so great at helping me while we were reading. So I'll help you with the things that you need too. But I feel like it would just be frustrating for you with how, patient, how much patience I require sometimes. <laughs> that sounds kind of familiar. I couldn't stop worrying about other people about that while we're reading. I couldn't stop worrying about that while we were reading. I was so afraid that you'd get frustrated with me. But I would never do that. I'd do my best to reassure you by mentioning how I have a lot of patience. Yeah, I know, but my irrational fears just won't be quiet sometimes. I'm sure it's the same for you, right? Yeah. Irrational fears. Well, you know... There's no way that you could frustrate me because I already like you as the person that you are. I know that you have a hard time believing that, but I promise that it's true. Ugh. You don't have to be a social person for people to like you. I think you're really considerate in your own way, you know? Worrying so much about other people's feelings. We're all kind of weird. It's a literature club, haha. <laughs> but it's the best part that we're all different. We have different interests. Like about the book? I'm reading it because I want to. I promise that's what I really want. It's a bit of a struggle, but try not to mistake that for me mistake that for me not enjoying it. I mean, we could never discover new things if we didn't try them first, right? I want to learn the reasons that you love it so much. And in the end, if it's not for me, then I can say that, but I'll be glad that I tried and learned uh, and learned more about you. Plus, you're like super duper smart and I want it to rub off on me. Haha. <laughs> Three fights back a smile at that comment. Already, the heavy atmosphere surrounding her seems to have evaporated through the caress of Sayori's arms. Your hair is so pretty. I always wanted long hair, but I was awful at taking care of it, so I cut it all off. Hmm. Yuri's tension relaxes. 
For once she feels okay just listening rather than worrying so much about saying the right thing. Sayori, sensing Yuri's comfort, lets her rest. It must be so difficult for her to feel or relax around other people. If the Literature Club can make that happen, then it's something that she deserves to experience. Epic. Well then. <laughs> Brushes off, wipes off sweat. <gasps> that never happened! Ooh, ooh, oh my god. Based on my understanding of your feelings, I suppose I wouldn't mind if we were to continue reading. Hee <laughs> hee. That's what I wanted to hear. But we can stop at any time. If you truly don't like it, please be honest about it. I won't be offended. Of course. I'm not going to judge anything this early on, though, so we'll just see what happens. Oh, and, um... It's not good to touch other people without their consent first. Oh, no, I'm sorry! I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. Oh, no, you didn't. I mean, I suppose it was kind of nice. I was just saying, I'm back! Monica's back! I haven't seen you, like, at all recently. Sayori trots over to Monica. Ah, she whispers loudly. Can I hug you? Haha, <laughs> sure, Sayori. Yuri wraps for her arms around Monica. Oh yeah, Yuri, it might be good to know. Sayori can be kind of a hug monster. Ah. Uh, hey, don't call me a monster. Artemis is a monster. If he inherits a kingdom, it could all spell disaster. Oh my god. Haha. <laughs> Yuri laughs, Monica perplexed, looks between the two of them, then smiles. Well, I'm glad you've been enjoying your reading so far. It's like our first real activity as a literature club. Uh, about that. But you've been so patient with exploring my interests. I think that'd be inconsiderate of me not to return the favor to you and learn about the things that you like. Yes! Do you like poetry? Yuri smiles. That was epic. Oh my god! Oh my, This is... This is beautiful. Did I have any more pictures? I think I do. Oh, of course, I have this. Oh, it's all wonderful. It's all so great. All right, but that was, uh, which one was this? That was DDLC plus part, uh, my part two, but part one and two of the chapter of understanding. So yeah, I'll get to the next one as soon as I can.